I figured I finally would film a video about a question I am always asked about and that is how do I own cats and hamsters at the same time? This may be a little bit of a debated topic. I know there are some people who truly do not believe in housing predators and prey in the same household, but I personally do believe that different species of animals are capable of coexisting in the same household as long as you're taking the proper precautions to keep all of the species in your household safe. Now you probably already know that I currently own two cats. We have Sadie, my dilute female calico cat, and she is three years old. And then JJ, my male long-haired black cat, who also is three years old. And throughout my time of owning hamsters, which has probably been about 12 years now, um, I've always had cats and hamsters coexisting in the same household without any issues. Now, I know this may not be the case for everyone and there are plenty of horrifying stories about how their cat has killed their hamster or other rodent that they own, but it's all about the safety precautions you are taking. The first thing I want to talk about is the disposition of the cat. There are plenty of cats out there who just really don't have a high prey drive and they're just not interested in killing anything or they're very docile and lazy compared to other cats who have a super high prey drive. Now this doesn't really make any difference besides it may make it easier to have the safety precautions but you're still going to have to take the exact same safety precautions. This is because they are animals at the end of the day and we do not speak animal. We cannot communicate with our cats. You have no clue what your cat is thinking. And at any moment, your cat could be like, you know what, today's the day I decide I'm gonna bite that hamster. And that is the end of that hamster's life. If I were to tell you about Sadie and JJ's personalities, JJ definitely does not have a super high prey drive. He can't even kill an insect. He literally will sit and look at it like, the heck is that thing, mom? Whereas Sadie has an extremely high prey drive. Any animal that she sees outside, she's super interested in. She loves to watch birds and she is an insect killer. So in order for me to own cats and rodents, I do have to take the many safety precautions and I'm going to go through what I do for that. First things first is that I have a room with a closing door. I think this is one of the most important things and the safest way to keep your cats and rodents separated because you, all you have to do is close a door and that is that. It's also really helpful if you do have your hamster in a separate room with a closing door because then in case your hamster does end up somehow escaping, then you know that they are going to be somewhere in that room because you went ahead and closed the door as long as the door gap underneath isn't too wide. But in that case, there are door stoppers that you can put around a door to then further make it safer so that the hamster can't go underneath the door to dangerous places. Now for me personally, my hamster room is also my rabbit room and I don't really like to isolate them by keeping the door shut 24 seven. I like to be able to interact with them and talk to them and things like that. So what I've done is I actually have a baby gate in front of the door. That way I am able to open and close just that door instead of the main door so I can still look into the room, I can talk to them, things like that and it does deter my cats from wanting to go in there. I know this is not gonna work for everyone's cats because a lot of people ask me, well, don't they just jump over the gate? No, oddly enough, they don't. I used to have a baby gate in my old room at my parents' house and Sadie would gladly jump over it and come into my room and that she was allowed to do that. But here, <laughs> She just doesn't, she doesn't bother. She doesn't really like the rabbits. The rabbits scare both of the cats. So they pretty much know that that room is a little scary for them and they don't want to enter that room. Now, when I go to bed or when I am going out shopping or I'm not going to be home, the main door gets closed. I don't just leave that door open with the baby gate. I do close the main door so that neither of the animals are going to be able to get to each other if the cats all of a sudden decided to jump over the gate, which I don't think they ever would. 
but it's still a precaution that I have to take. The next thing that's super important is a very secure lid. You're gonna wanna make sure that even if you have a room where your cat and hamster are separate, you wanna make sure that it's a lid that's not gonna be easily bumped off or your cat can't figure out how to get into it. Not that I recommend allowing your cat to go near your hamster's cage. I know some people let their cats lay on their hamster's cage. I personally, I'm not a fan of that. I don't let my cats do that. They obviously they don't go in that room. So like, I just, I don't trust allowing a cat to do that, especially when it comes to like wire bars or a wire lid. A cat could possibly stick their paw through and a cat's claws are extremely dirty. So one scratch can lead to infection and death to a hamster, super, super easy. And that's why I just think keeping your cat and hamster separate is the best way to go. A while ago, a viewer on Instagram actually showed me how she cat proofed her hamster cage to ensure that her cat was never able to get into the cage. And one thing that she did, she actually got some baby locks and I thought this was a really, really good idea. So if you really want to be extra careful to make sure that your cat or even dog or even younger siblings can't get into the cage, baby locks are a really smart idea. Another good thing is to have your hamster's enclosure higher up. If you have a perfectly sized table for the hamster cage to sit on where it fits exactly the same size, that's probably gonna be one of the best things because then your cat is gonna have a harder time trying to like jump up at it because there's not gonna be any space on the table for them to jump up on. So that's something that I would recommend rather than just having it on the floor if you are gonna have a cat around once again highly recommend you have a separate room. When it comes to transporting my hamsters or when I wanna free roam them, for example, I really like free roaming my Syrian hamsters in my bathroom, which is connected to my bedroom, and that is across the hallway from the pet room. And in order to do this safely, I will put the hamster in a carrier, I will carry them to my bedroom, I will close my bedroom door with the cats on the outside because my cats are very nosy and they know exactly what I'm doing when I have a hamster and a carrier so they'll try to follow me and I'll close that bedroom door and then I'll go into the bathroom and I'll close the bathroom door. This just is double safety. <laughs> That way the cats are extra, extra far and there's no way for them to come up to the bathroom door and decide to stick their paw underneath the door and try to play a game with the hamster. So I just like to make sure that both doors are closed because I don't want to take any risks. The last thing that is honestly super important and I see way too many times, don't introduce your cat to your hamsters. If anything, if you can get away with your cat not ever knowing you even have a hamster, honestly, that's the best That's the best thing in the world. But there are way too many accounts out there on Instagram and on YouTube who will look at their very docile, gentle cat who probably doesn't have that high prey drive and they like to put them on the cat's head or around, let the hamster just crawl around them and this honestly, it's just super stressful. If you're going to be a irresponsible owner, at least do it without sharing it to the rest of the world because when you're sharing something irresponsible to the rest of the internet, it just gives other people the idea to also do that irresponsible thing. And this is gonna lead to people losing their hamsters because their cat decides last minute, I actually wanna bite this hamster. And remember, cats have extremely dirty mouths and claws. It literally takes one nip or scratch, your hamster is dead. So that is how I personally have been able to keep cats and hamsters for 12 years now without having a single incident to do with the two different species. And I hope to continue to not ever have an incident because I just, I basically don't let them ever interact. There's no way of them coming in contact with each other. So yeah, guys, I will see you in my next video. Bye.